Hello, and welcome to this uh, this little gig vlog I'm going to be doing. Um, so I haven't done like a actual like vlog vlog for ages. It's normally just been like proper videos on things, but you know these can be fun from time to time. And this is also the first time I'm filming on my new phone, which is a Volafone, a phone made in Germany. Hey, right? as I've always done it with a camcorder before, but I thought as I'm going to be out and about today, like gigging, it probably makes sense to use a phone instead. Uh, and so all my guitars are here, and this is actually in my corridor, so they're all where they shouldn't be, because all my stuff is currently waiting to be picked up in the van to go down to the venue. Um, so I'm, I've recently joined a covers band called Lost Era, and we are going to be going down to do a gig at a place called The Carlisle, and this is going to be an engagement party, I do believe. So I'm re really looking forward to doing that, and I thought it'd be fun to uh, film the whole journey. Let's go. So here we are in the van, here's John. What's up, man? Here's Jay. Hello! Concentrating on the road. Hello! Like a very safe driver. You should be. Here we go. We're all packed up. Uh, it's a bit, like, dangerously stacked, so we're very, very, very carefully driving yeah, around. Yeah. What speed are we doing at the moment, Jay? Uh, about five miles an hour. About uh, five miles an hour. Because <laughs> uh, you don't want uh, the Les Paul to fall off the amp or anything like that. Uh, yeah. Uh -oh. Excited, guys? I'm very Hell yeah! And here we are. Here's the venue tonight. Might not look like much at the moment. But tonight it'll be Wembley Arena. See what I mean? Oh, a bit hectic. Right now, having worked up a really, really big sweat, here's all the stuff up the stairs. And here's a magic trick for you. With the click of my fingers, it'll be all assembled. Voila! Here we go. And the stage is, well, it's mostly ready. We're still waiting on Gaz to come with all the mics and everything. So you can see we've got a empty mic stand here, but we've got all my equipment over here, we've got Jay's drums and we've got John's bass. Uh, our mixing desk is over there and our mini mixing desk as well. We're going to be setting that out into the audience over here a little bit later, but let's have a quick look at my rig. Let's have a little bit of a rig rundown. So first things first, the guitars. I have Blondie, my absolute favourite Telecaster. I don't think I've spoken about her much on the channel, but she does appear a lot. It's a Baja Tele that's been heavily, heavily modified. This is my main gigging guitar. And I also have, as you've seen probably from a previous video, my Tokai Love Rock, the Les Paul copy. And so I've got myself a nice 10 meter cable going aha, over to the pedal board over here. Now, anyone who's watched my video so far will realize there's maybe a pedal or two missing, like the HX Stomp. My plan is that once I have all of this done and dusted, once I've bought every new pedal I need, I'm gonna take all this off, hoover it, do a whole video about it as well, cause you know, gotta make videos about everything, haven't you? And then I'm going to get some custom wires done so everything can be put together. But if I want to talk quickly, we've got the uh, guitar going into my Crybaby from Hell over here. Then going into my Boss Acoustic Simulator. That's going into my Korg Pitch Black Tuner. And then that's just into the smart gate and over to the amp. But we do have an effects loop as well. So for my effects loop, it's out of the amp into a Boss Flanger. Going into my MXR Black Label Chorus. Going into the Moor... Devon Townsend Ocean Machine uh, delay. I'm not using this as last time I did, uh, it kept looping and I had to actually unplug it during the gig and replug in my whole pedal board because I couldn't work out to turn it off. So I'm going to be learning how to use that, but right now it's going to be sitting pretty. Instead, we have the MXR carbon copy analog delay, my favorite delay pedal. And uh, powering all of this, you might see on a little video a little while ago, we have the uh, chocolate over here. Uh, chonking chonking power supply really really good i've got a few uh, sockets still to be used that's gonna be for the other pedals later uh got my mic here that's tipped over a little bit gonna have to fix that there and going over here we then have the amp the amp you've seen in many videos this is my laney vh100r 100 watt fully valve amplifier it sounds bloody great with the matching cabinet this isn't actually the proper one this is this like as in they did like two different ones this was meant to be for the gh i think this one uh, it's a 16 ohm cabinet, and instead of having the vintage 30s, I think it has Celestian 2080s? I could be wrong there. I'll put it up in the in the video here. I'm being uh, mic'd up with my trusty old Shaw SM57, and that is going to be my rig for this show. And so if we move around the stage a little bit there, we've got drums, but hey, who cares about those? Uh, instead, we have John over here. Say hello, John. Hello there. And uh, his absolutely immense looking bass rig. I've got to say, John, I've played with quite a few bass players in my time. I've not yet played with someone who owns a full stack. Oh, maybe not. I've played with like one stack and a lot of combos, but never like a full stack bass player. And our last gig was, uh, it sounded pretty thunderous, yes, I might say. Right, do you want to do you wanna give us a run? Should we go through the basses first? Yes, absolutely. So what have you got here? This one right here, this is a Sandberg TM4. Where are they made? They are made in Germany. Nice. Uh, Stuttgart. Um, 
This is a TM4 model, the Nighthawk. Because I only made a few uh, models of these limited edition. It comes in two colours, this copper you see right here, or, or the uh, grey colour. And those dots you see, they are glowing, glowing the dark ones. Absolutely lovely. You've got your jazz pickup down here. And you've got a Music Man style pickup with a single coil. And all the wonderful blending switches that you have. And what's that switch there you just played? That's a single coil tap. Yep. And there, so it goes from, it cuts that off and you just have these two goes running right here. Mm -hmm. and you put it back, like so, eventually. And then you have them all running in sequence, depending on where the pickup pan. I always have it running full. You can have a best time, have something, have it running all the way, I say. Absolutely, absolutely. And is this an active electronics one? It certainly is. There's it is. Giveaway. There we go. There's the batteries. We can see right here, made in Germany. Made in Germany. Nice, 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 nice. And what else have we got then? Well, I bought this one last year. This is a Sterling by Music Man uh, Stingray. Now, to the purest of people that like their Music Man Stingrays, this, in no comparison, sounds really different to the bigger brothers that you can get from the United States. Are you sure? I am very sure. Okay. I'm very adamant because I play the damn thing. Uh, these are made in Indonesia. Solid flame rotated neck. Again, six volt configuration, active. No passive mode on these whatsoever. No, it's active or nothing. Active or nothing. Have you ever had the battery die? Uh, no, because I don't let it get that far. I change it every six months. Very sensible. You've got a freeway selector down here. Because mm -hmm. on the original ones, you had the input jack over here, and only the two band, so now you've got the three band EQ. Is that like the old like Leo Fender ones that are set up? Yeah. 1976. So, well, to do a humbucker one because we'll see more sound. Why the hell not? You've got your classic down here, it's these two. Mm -hmm. Up, you have two outer ones. And do you know if they're like in phase or are they out of phase like Fender Strats are? Out of phase, then you have uh, in parallel and series. Oh, cool. Middle switch, all of them running. Two inner ones, and just here. So I run right in the middle. And to get a bit of everything. Yep. It's quite a different, different sound. This is more low end uh, compared to the high end poppy kind of sound this does. Mm -hmm. So best of both worlds, if you ask me. Right, any pedals? Any pedals? No, no, no pedals whatsoever. Never have, never will. <laughs> no. Although we are trying to work out how to uh, how to foot switch your thing together. I reckon an A B Y. But before the audience gets all confused as to how that's going to work, let's go for the amps ourselves. Yeah. Uh, so, do you want to go cabinets or heads first? We'll go from the bottom up, shall we? From the bottom up. What well, do we have here then? These are custom made industrial ones. They were made by a friend of mine, Mark Stafford. Great friend of mine, good bass player. His son is too, Gary Stafford. Does he have a website? He does not. He, he made it all for himself. It's all like, like I need to know basses, really. So that's a 1x15 that he made for me. Mm -hmm. They are about 11 years old now. This is a 4 uh, by 10 inch one. Uh, looked after. He made all these and everything that you see himself. He puts it all together uh, with plywood and everything like that. Now, these cabinets are quite interesting because they don't have a normal jack connector, do they? They don't. They're speak on only. Speak on only. Uh, main reason. So, you know, without being selfish, I don't mind anyone using my amplifier, but it's to give it that pure full range sound. Now, at the top here, we have Korg uh, DTR 2000 tuner. I had this forever. I plug it straight in through here, and this has never let me down in tuning, no problem. And I run it out from the back output into the Sansam RBI. I've had this for year, many, many years. As Adam mentioned, I don't have a foot switch, I just push it in manually, like so, and for clean, take it off. It's quite funny, but behind the scenes, we have a version of the uh, set list written out with a dot next to certain songs where John here knows he has to run over and press the button so we don't just start the song without him. <laughs> nah, push the button. Uh, this is a bit of a decoration grill for a bit of space saving so I can push the wires through. Is that also for cooling? It's also for cooling. I didn't want just a black blank thing, so I had the one with the grill put in it. I could have had gone two ply, but I thought, no, I need space for the wires. So. And are you tempted to put an effects rack in there? Um, do you want to get yourself an axe effects? Probably axe effects or some kind of compression, something like that. Would be oh, you do? I thought you were going to say no. <laughs> no, but maybe in the future. But right now, it runs greatly as it is. Nice, nice, nice. And then we come to the new edition, the <coughs> Orange Obi, Obi-Wan, Star Wars edition. The old Kenobi. The old Kenobi. 500. I used to have an Ampeg SVT5 Pro, and that was um, at the time 15 years old, it's 20 odd years ago. And over time, my volume started here when I first got it, mm -hmm. and by the end of its life, it was damn near over here. Oh, really? So it went to buggery basically. Was, was that a valve or a solid state? It was a solid state. Okay, and this is solid state as well, isn't it? This is, yes. The drive channel was up here, and I never used it. It sounded bleeding awful. So. Sold it, got this bad boy, and the first time I ever did it, I thought, right, 
Old to Habits Die Hard was played <laughs> right to the top and it scared the life out of me. I don't blame you. Because I wasn't used to all new technology. The settings, as you'll see up here on the stands up as well, pretty much flat. So you get the pure unalterated sound. You got the blend over here. So off all the way is completely clean and you got your drive circuit over here. Mm. So you can whack that up and you can dial in how much you want. But you never tend to use that one, do you? No, not at all. The distortion is too harsh on here. I like the drive from the sounds amp. It's got more of a cut through other than a big fat sound, you know? Oh, okay. You want. So what are you saying? This, if you use the orange, it's a bit more lemmy. A bit more lemmy. Whereas this is a bit more Gady Lee. Yeah, a bit more cut through. More, more like a P bass. And this one's more like a... Jazz bass, like a slap to a chop. I get what you mean, I get what you mean. So, on the blend, I use just a little touch of it for the harmonic responses, and that is it. Now, you're um, you're slightly controversial in the sense that you use a pick and fingers. Yes. Um, people, you know, when I first learned to play, I used a pick all the time when we meet, meet a Dunlop, because a friend of mine um, called another John, he would play for a fight war amplifier. My brother would play drums, and I only had a little 15... What amplifier? Oh, she needed it for the cup. So I had to really pug to get the sound, so that's where the heavy downstroke came came to play. And then as years of doing metal bands, it was pick playing or nothing. Mm. So after doing this band, I thought, you know what? I was born with these digits, so let's use them. So I go back and forth. Nice 50-50 mix. Right, thanks, Sean. We'll be seeing you again a bit later. <laughs> I need to go to the loo, and uh, it's this. And so this will be tonight's concert attire, mostly. I've got a black, just muscle fit t-shirt, black skinny jeans, and uh, currently these little red boots on, but I've actually got some uh, snakeskin boots I'm putting on instead. I was taking the glasses off as well. Uh, I'm short-sighted, so I do need them, but like on the stage, it's kind of fine. Got a bit of sound checking going on. So it's almost showtime. And so the, uh, the snakeskin boots have had to go on. Let's hope it doesn't give me leg cramp like you did last time. standing on top of my my amp and I've got all my equipment just laid out all over there. Ah, oh, just went to the van now. I'm gonna get it all packed off and uh, heading on home. It's been a great old gig, a really, really solid gig. I've enjoyed myself thoroughly. By the way, uh, Lost Era is the band name. I'll be putting the socials in the, uh, in the links below. The van's here, so now we're just uh, packing everything away. Gotta get it all home. And there we are, back home, all packed away. And, uh, oh, 
What a good gig. What a tiring gig, though. Uh, I think it's going to be... Uh, I think I'm going to need a, a shower before I go to bed, actually. Uh, I've definitely worked up a sweat in that show. This has been a fun little vlog. And uh, oh, I'm tired. I think it's time for me to go to bed. And so I think that'd be a perfect time for us to end the video right there. And if you enjoyed, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. And I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.